kick it, Jackie Chan. Oh, Jamar Chase with the dive. You know, Garrett Wilson's wide open. Garrett Wilson, touchdown Barrett. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video in the Water Juice channel and welcome back to another Madden a Rebuild. Today we are starting the rebuilds for basically the 2024 NFL season. I know obviously we're just getting started with the offseason, but I want to get started because this free agency has been so crazy there's been so many moves there's been so many players signing with opposing teams like division teams division rivals big names going places you wouldn't ever think they would go like it's just been one of the craziest off seasons in the nfl that i can ever remember maybe the craziest i know that might be a little bit of recency bias but it's got to be one of, it's got to be up there as one of the craziest free agencies in the nfl history so Recently, I did the Mac Jones to the Jacksonville Jaguars one, and that kind of kick-started uh, the rebuilds with the like the modern day, the current day rebuilds. That one I did that. We won a Super Bowl with, with Mac Jones as the starting quarterback of the Jacksonville Jaguars. That was kind of fun. And now we're going to be taking on maybe the most controversial? I don't know. Definitely the most interesting move of the entire free agency. It is going to be Saquon Barkley to the Philadelphia Eagles. I know it, it's shocked me when I saw that this is actually going to be happening. At first, I thought it was fake news, but it actually is. It is true. He's headed to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, after uh, a nice little stint in New York for the Giants. Did, did have some injury issues, but when he was on the field, he was one of the best running backs in the league. And now he takes that talent to... Philadelphia and, and is going to help Jalen Hurts score a bunch of touchdowns with the tush push. So today's rebuild, we are going to be rebuilding the Saquon Barkley Philadelphia Eagles. This one might not be obviously that difficult since it's the Philadelphia Eagles and they always simulate very well in Madden and in real life, they're a pretty good team. I know they did collapse in real life, but they're a pretty good team with some pretty good players. So this one shouldn't be too difficult. We just need to add a few pieces, a little plug-and-play kind of action, and we should be winning a, a Super Bowl. So I'm guessing maybe three seasons, maybe four. If everything goes horribly wrong, it could take us four seasons, but I'm guessing probably around two or three seasons is the, is the uh, threshold for us to win at least one Super Bowl. Who knows? I will be getting into more of the difficult rebuilds, You, I guess you could say, like the Rams after they had Aaron Donald retire and they lose a bunch of different players. The Chargers who are fire selling all their entire wide receiver core and Justin Herbert's got nobody to throw to. Austin Eckler's in Washington now. Like Justin Herbert's got nobody. So the Chargers are on the list. The Falcons now with Kirk Cousins at quarterback is an interesting one that I want to try to take on. The Jets getting Tyron Smith to be the protection for Aaron Rodgers now that Aaron Rodgers is back healthy healthy the Jets are on the list obviously my Patriots are on the list because who knows what the heck they're gonna do they haven't done really anything uh Cowboys are on the list because the Cowboys literally have not done anything there's so many teams that I want to I want to rebuild here in the offseason obviously we'll get more rebuilds as the draft comes around and when the draft actually happens and all the rookies are on their on their teams now I do want to mention one more one more thing before we start the video I am using mods in this rebuild. Not any crazy mods. I'm just using the player likeness mod. I'm and I'm using two tattoo mods. Tattoo mods for the actual players, and then tattoo mod for the created players that come in. Those are the only mods I'm using. And because I'm using mods, we can't go online. Unfortunately, you can't go online when you use mods on PC. So we have to start at the 2023, the beginning of the 2023 season, instead of in the off season using start today. I was going to use the Start Today mod that they have, but the Start Today mod that is the most recent one is not up to date with where the NFL season actually is. Like, it wouldn't have a lot of the additions and retirements and all that stuff from what happened just a couple of days ago or what happened today even. I don't, like, who knows what's going to happen. So that mod is a little bit slightly out of date, which is crazy because it's only, like, three days old. But that's just that just tells you how crazy the NFL season offseason has been. So the Start Today mod is a little bit out to date, so that's why we're not using that. But... 
we are going to start in the 2023 regular season because I wanted to use the mods for the player likeness, for the tattoos and all that kind of stuff, just to make the immersion a little bit better. So uh, unfortunately, the draft picks aren't going to be correct. The order of the draft isn't going to be correct because we obviously have to simulate that first season and all that kind of stuff is going to be obviously randomized because we're starting at the beginning of the season, but the rosters are at least correct. So that's something. <laughs> and we're going to be using the 2024 NFL draft class. So Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jalen Daniels, Marvin Harrison, Roma Dunze, all, all the boys are in the class. So that's going to be pretty interesting. So now without further ado, it's time to get into this rebuild. Like I said, it shouldn't take too long because it's already, we're starting with a good foundation with the Philadelphia Eagles. So hopefully it won't take more than two or three years, but we'll find out if you guys go and enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club, leave your team down below. You want to see me rebuild after this crazy off season, and I will take them on and see if I can get a championship for your favorite team. But without further ado, it's time to rebuild the new look, Saquon Barkley, Philadelphia Eagles. So this is the squad. Obviously, we don't have Jason Kelsey. He has retired, and a lot of memes were coming out. When Saquon Barkley, the news for Saquon Barkley dropped and everybody was like, oh, Sa uh, Justin Kel Jason Kelsey needs to come out of retirement now because they're doing him dirty. They signed Saquon Barkley after, like the moment after he retires. Like It was pretty funny, but we do need to address the center position and, and really we need to address the right guard position. No disrespect to Cam Jurgens or Hennessy or anything. Like, actually, you know what? I don't care. Disrespect to these. They, they're not good in mad. So we need to get new right guard and new center and then the offense line's basically done. Uh, Landon Dickerson doesn't have his new contract in the game, obviously, uh, but he did, in real life, buy a new lawnmower. So, fun fact about that. The rest of the offense line is very good. Dallas Goddard's solid at tight end. We don't need to work on that. Wide receiver is pretty much done, I'd say. I mean, maybe we could add a third one since they signed Devontae Parker, but Devontae Parker is Devontae Parker. Trust me, I'm a Patriots fan. I don't really know if he's going to be an option. So, I mean, this is a very, very deep receiving class in the draft this year. So maybe we add one of those guys and then have Devontae Parker be a fourth receiver. Who knows? We obviously have the main man, Saquon Barkley, wearing the number 26. He loved to see it. Five years in the league. He's a stud. He's so good. And now he's on a Philadelphia team that is already pretty good. Obviously, we have the main man. We have Jalen Hurts, who I'm hoping can lead us to a Super Bowl within the first season or two. And then we have his backup. Kenny Tiny Hands Pickett has been traded to the Philadelphia Eagles. Quarterback controversy? I don't know. I'm just kidding. No quarterback controversy. Tiny Hands is not going to be doing anything except for holding a little tiny clipboard to fit his tiny little hands. Jalen Hurts is our starter. And the offense is pretty much good to go. Except for, like I said, the offensive line. Defensively, we add Devin White. We still have Shaq Leonard, but he's a little bit older at this point. Hassan Reddick, I like. <laughs> we have Sidney Brown and Breed Blankenship. I don't know what we're going to do at safety. I like both of these guys, but we'll see how they develop, I guess. We'll give them a year, see how they develop. Obviously, we have uh, CJ Gardner Johnson, who's back. And I think he said he was going to wear number eight for the Eagles this year to honor the Mamba, Kobe Bryant. So if number eight is open, I will give him that. And it's not. I don't know who, who's wearing number eight in this team right now, but we'll give him number nine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, the defensive line's very, very good. We have an old Brandon Graham. Josh Sweat I like. We have, obviously, the two studs in the middle in uh, Carter and Davis. So I like both those guys. Corner, we do need to address. I like Keely Ringo, but he's just not a high enough overall, especially with Nolan Development. Madden, that's just, that's just not going to work. Bradbury's a little bit older. So is Darius Slay, but he's still a top dog. Corner, outside linebacker are things that we need to address. Maybe another pass rusher to replace Brandon Graham, depending on how long the video takes. I don't know. Like I said, this could be two to three seasons. This could be four to five. Who knows how long this is going to go. I have already loaded in the draft class with Marvin Harris and all the boys. So we've got the official 2024 draft class. Our draft picks, picks? We obviously have the only pick that we have is the first round pick. We have two seconds, no third. Like I said, the draft picks are not accurate because... I, I couldn't get them accurate with the roster build so because we're not using like start today or anything like that so the draft picks aren't accurate but the rosters are which is is nice so we will simulate this first season see how things go I'm assuming we make the playoffs because this is basically the Philadelphia Eagles with even better talent except for they did lose Kelsey so that does kind of hurt but I feel like the rest of the talent especially adding Saquon to this team should be able to propel them over that 
need of off interior offensive linemen. So I'm going to still link to the end of year number one, and we will see how this Eagle team does with the new additions, especially see how Saquon Barkley does. We made it to the end of year one, and we did not do as good as I thought we would by a long shot. Ten and seven is the best that we can do in year number one of the franchise. I guess maybe there is a reason we need to do a rebuild here in Philadelphia. Ten and seven is not as good as I thought we would do, especially with the team that we have. 3,400 yards, 26 touchdowns, 7 picks. PX for Jalen Hurts is a fine season. Maybe we do need to focus a little bit more on his weapons because he's got A.J. Brown, he's got Devonta Smith, but after that, it's a significant drop-off off, drop off if he's not thrown out of the backfield to Saquon Barkley. He's got Dallas Goddard, but maybe he needs another weapon. So we'll, we'll think about that. Rushing, I mean, Saquon just takes over a ball game. 1,200 yards, 16 touchdowns. He's phenomenal. 1,000 yards for 7 touchdowns for A.J. Brown. Almost 1,000 yards for Devonta Smith with 7 touchdowns. Devontae Parker, 500 yards, 2 touchdowns. Goddard had 6 touchdowns, but I don't know. I feel like these are good numbers. Apparently, the defense maybe needs a little bit of work because obviously we're losing a bunch of games that we probably shouldn't. 121 tackles from Devin White is not something I expected, but I guess I should because middle linebackers in MLB, or MLB the show, uh, uh, in Madden, always get 100 plus tackles no matter what team no matter what scheme you're on they always get 100 plus tackles so it's not really a shock i guess it's just a shock more so than Stephen white uh reed blankenship had 97 tackles that's nice maybe he'll go up to start development in the offseason hassan reddick with 22 tackles for loss does lead the team carter had 20 graham had 14 sack leader was brandon graham with six reddick has four we're just not really getting a lot of pressure we're getting a few interceptions cj uh, gardner johnson had three Big play Slay 2, Bradbury 2. Maybe the defense is something we need to focus on a little bit. I thought the defense was going to be able to hold up, but I guess it obviously didn't if we lost seven games, seven, seven too many if you ask me. But now we play division rival Dallas Cowboys who won the division and we beat them 31-24. Are we going to go on a little win streak here? Are we going to go on a little win streak and beat all the teams that probably beat us in the post or in the regular season? No, we don't. We lose to the Niners. So our miracle playoff run ends after one win in the wild card. But that's okay. There's, there's a reason we're doing a rebuild, ladies and gentlemen. There's a reason that we are doing a rebuild because this team, obviously, last season in real life, kind of sold. They choked away a big time. Look at that. Niners and Chiefs in the Super Bowl. So I guess even if we didn't do start today, it still ends with the same two teams in the, in the Super Bowl. And I'm assuming the Chiefs are going to win. They don't. It is the 49ers. So... Now we truly have entered a alternate timeline. The San Francisco 49ers are world champions. Crazy world we live in. Fred Warner is the MVP. Lamar Jackson is the MVP of the league. Doug Peterson, coach of the year. McCaffrey and, and Crosby are the players of the year. Puka Nakua, offense player of the year. And Drew Sanders is your defensive player of the year. So those are your year one awards and Super Bowl winner and all the good stuff. Let's get to the real juicy stuff. The first offseason, technically... We've already got the offseason done because we added all the, ad the additions for this year. But you, you, you've been through it now. So players that have contracts up. Devonta Smith we need to accept the option of. Although we could just sign him because he wants to be here. And he's probably going to be even more expensive next season. This is a tricky one. There's not too many guys that I want back. Um... Zacchaeus or Watkins? Zacchaeus or Watkins? Probably Watkins because he's cheaper and wants to be here more so than Zacchaeus does. So I'll give him like three and a half and two and a half, and he should accept that he is. He does. Uh, we don't need Rashad Penny because we have Barkley. I'll bring Shaq Leonard back because I do enjoy Shaq Leonard. I think he's a very good player, even his his older age. So he's coming back. We have forty nine million dollars. I'm just gonna accept the option of Devonta Smith. We'll see what happens next year. Hopefully, it's not too much more expensive, but I have a bad feeling that it's going to be. And then everybody else here, I mean, maybe we sign Albert O just for back, but $14 million for a backup tight end is probably a little bit too expensive. I guess we'll see what happens in free agency. Now, I don't know what happened to some of the unsigned free agents, because as of recording this video, guys like Chase Young and Odell Beckham Jr. and all those guys have not signed yet in real life. So, I don't know. They obviously were still in free agency here, so they obviously got picked up by a team. But in free agency, I think you can only, in Madden, you can only offer one-year deals. 
So I'm assuming these guys are going to be here in free agency. Uh, but they aren't. So maybe they, um, I guess they could have reached deals with their, with their teams, the new teams that they signed with. They could have reached new extensions. As for us, oh, Odell is here. So he only signed a, a one-year deal and they got, didn't get uh, brought back. We've got an option at receiver. We could spend big on Amari Cooper and then have three number one receivers, basically. I don't think that's a very good idea considering how amazingly deep the wide receiver class is in, in this draft. I don't know. Maybe we, we spend a little bit on like Michael Thomas, can't guard Mike, and bring him in as a fifth receiver. I'll spend I'll spend a little bit on Michael Thomas. We'll see what he says. If he doesn't want to come here, that's fine. If he signs another team, I'm not going to be too worried about it. Left tackle, we're pretty good with Mylotta and Lane Johnson, so we don't need a tackle, but we do need interior. Connor Williams at 82 overall, uh, 27 years old. I just wish he had a development trait. Development trait would really help me out. And Trey Turner just doesn't have the age on his side. So I think we're going to have to go offensive line in the draft. Defensive line is just really not better than what we have, to be honest. Jevian Clowney's still here. Man, I'm not really seeing a ton of guys that would make this team better. And I'm not just going to waste money to waste money. Although Emmanuel Mosley, I'm, I'm intrigued by. I'd offer Emmanuel Mosley this since he really wants to be in Philadelphia. But other than that, there's just not anybody that does it for me. Nobody moves the needle. Nobody tickles the pickle. I mean, it's just, I'm not seeing anything. I'm not really seeing anything. I didn't mean to back out there. We need to go to the evaluate offers. We'll just have to try to see what happens in the draft. Both guys sign and both guys sign with us. So we add another depth receiver in Michael Thomas and we add another depth corner in Emmanuel Mosley. And we still have a good amount of money. So I, I like it. I think we're we're fine with what we have. Michael Thomas, Devontae Parker now in there. Uh, where? Oh, Lane Johnson retired. Oh, no. I guess I should have looked at the team before I went to free agency because David Bakhtiari would have been a good fit. Did he sign anywhere? He did. He signed with Denver. Mm. That's my bad. I should have looked at the team before I went to free agency. I didn't realize that Lane Johnson retired because now... I don't want any of the other offensive linemen. That's on me. I, I'll admit that. I should have looked at the team. Now the offensive line needs another addition because we need to get another tackle so that Landon Dickerson can move back into guard. So this draft is going to be pretty massive for interior offensive line. Or just offensive linemen in general, I guess. We're going to need basically an entire new offensive line. We're going to need to maybe add another receiver. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that all in this draft. It might have to be another season. But I guess we'll find out. We'll see what mock draft number five has for us, and then we'll make our decision from there. I did do the national focus on interior offensive line, so that'll help us. But mock draft number five. Caleb Williams going number one to New England. Okay, I wouldn't mind that, I guess. As long as Caleb Williams lives up to the hype. So we know that... Uh, is it Fautano? Fautano? Fout I don't know how to pronounce his name. Marvin's actually going to go number 18? What in the world? <laughs> I mean, we could trade up and get Marv, but they have us taking Roma Dunze. JC Latham wouldn't be bad. A lot of these guys are in our range. I can't believe they have Marv going down to 18. That's kind of crazy. Let me go to the scouting, the private workouts, and, and figure some things out. Private workouts. Alright, so let me go to the interior of the offensive line. So we know that this guy is around three to four true talent. Let me know about Graham Barton. And then, ooh, Jackson Powers Johnson is a round one talent. That's nice to know. Uh, I'd like to know about Zach Frazier. And then I'd like to know about... I'd probably have to know a little bit more about J.C. Latham. Because we could take it. We, we do need to take a tackle. So probably need to know a little bit more about him. So those will be all my moves. What pick did I say we had? We have pick number 25. 
Okay. Pick number 25. That's not a bad spot to be in. It's not amazing. Obviously, you, you want to have a higher pick, top 10 preferably, but 25 is not bad considering we are pretty much a championship caliber team. Let's start drafting and see what happens. Number one pick in the draft, Patriots have it, and they do take their franchise quarterback, or hopefully their franchise quarterback in Caleb Williams. Will Marvin Harrison fall to 18? That's kind of crazy to me that he's even considered to fall to 18 in this mock draft because I've used this draft class before, and he was like a top five pick. So I don't know what happened this time around, but he doesn't fall. The Rams take him at 11. That's good. At least he didn't fall out of the the uh, the top 15 or something like that. That would have been crazy. All right, round one, pick 25, we are up. And Latham is available. He's the best player on the board. Oh, Mims is here. Keon Coleman, Troy Friendly. But like, that's what I'm talking about. The wide receiver class is just so deep. I mean, look at this down the board. You got Brian Thomas Jr., first round pick. You got Xavier Worthy down here in the second, third. You got Brandon Rice down here. You got so much talent down here uh, that it's it's very deep. Very, very deep class. We don't need to get a wide receiver right now. I think getting J.C. Latham is the, is the best idea. Because we could come out in the second round. We have two second round picks, 15-25. So we can come out in the second round, grab a guard, either Cooper Beebe or Graham Barton, depending on who's available. And then we could also maybe grab ourselves a center, Zach Frazier. That could be a possibility. So, I mean, I think we're pretty good on offensive line. Or at least we have a lot of decisions that we can make. So I'm going to take J.C. Latham with this first pick. He is a normal development player, but that's okay. Because he still should be decent enough overall and have a chance to lock down this team. So let's simulate to the second round pick 15. Keon Coleman went the pick before us. Troy Franklin's still on the board, but Graham Barton is available. And so is Cooper Beebe. Cooper Beebe has round one to two true talent. Barton has round two to three. Zach Frazier is also available. I think I might take Cooper Beebe here. Just for the solid fact that he has round one and two true talent and uh, the other dude doesn't. I'm going to take Cooper. Hidden development, Cooper Beebe headed to the Philadelphia Eagles. He will probably move over to right guard when we move Landon Dickerson back to left. So that'll be the move there. And then our next pick, all the wide receivers are still available. But is Zach Frazier still available? He's not. Zach Frazier no longer available kind of hurts kind of hurts a little bit is there anybody on the defensive line that could be good I like Mason Smith Michael Hall Jr. is down there I saw there's chop if I want chop I gotta take him now because he's not gonna make it I don't think to the fourth round I guess he could there's a couple corners we could grab I like Mikey Sanders still down there so we could be okay with that. I think I'm going to take a receiver here. We've got Troy Franklin. you got Adonai Mitchell. you got a lot of potential here. Xavier Worthy, is he as fast now as he is in real life? He ran 4-3. I mean, give him, bump that up. He ran 4-2. But I think I want to take either Adonai Mitchell or Brian Thomas Jr. Which one's better? 4-5, decent athlete. Okay, and then Adonai Mitchell. We could take Troy Franklin, too similar for Adam I didn't mean to back out there but is Troy Franklin just a better physical athlete not really I mean he's a little bit faster uh, I think Adonai Mitchell is going to be our guy I mean Malachi, Malachi Corley is also good they're both six foot four Brian Thomas Jr. is a little bit bigger but Adonai Mitchell has got a catching and I think Thomas only has B so I'm going to take Adonai Mitchell here. Adonai Mitchell will be our next pick. Hidden development, I like that. So pair him alongside uh, Devonta Smith and, and A.J. Brown, and that could be a lethal three wide receiver pairing there. And now we don't pick again until the fourth round, but early in the fourth round, so we'll see who's still on the board. Hopefully some guys are. And Brian Thomas uh, and Jr. and Troy Falcon are still on the board. So is Xavier Worthy, and so is Mikey Sanders still. I like that. I like that a lot. What about Chop? Is Chop on the board? No, Chop's gone. I figured he would be. Tommy Eichenberg's still there. Steel Chambers. I think I'm going to take Mikey. 5'9 is, is kind of brutal, but he ran 4'4 four, four and 4'3. He's a good athlete. 
he's probably normal development looking at his his uh, skills maybe he's not the guy what about uh, Kamari Lassiter he's got better man coverage and zone coverage and he's probably bigger than he's six foot so he's not significantly bigger but he is bigger than Sandra still Josh Newton's here but there's probably a reason. I mean, we're in round four, and Lassiter's still available when he was projected to go round two to three. So I think I'm going to take Sander still. He's going to be normal development. He is. But that could end up being a good value pick for us. Who knows? Who knows down the line what happens there? We pick in round five now. Late in the round. So what's going to be available? The receivers are still on the board, including Xavier Worthy. I think at this point I might take Xavier Worthy just for that speed. I might just do that right now. Take both Texas receivers. Xavier Worthy, welcome to the squad. 97 speed. That probably needs to be bumped up to 99 if we're being totally honest. Xavier Worthy, welcome to the Philadelphia Eagles. Two receivers when I didn't expect us to get to. But, I mean, he fell to me and I couldn't pass it up. And he does have a hidden development. Our final pick in the draft is round six. So we'll see what happens here. We probably need to get a defensive lineman or a linebacker. Is there one that I like? Hmm. A lot of potentially undrafted guys. Judge Culpepper, what a, what a name that is. He could be the best out of the bunch, if we're being totally honest, looking at the rest of these guys. Brennan Jackson, all these guys are undrafted. I think I might take that Judge Culpepper, dude. He's not going to be great. But he's the best out of the bunch that we have available to us. 86 strength is not too shabby. 6'4", 287, that's a tiny D-tackle. And we move him to edge, and he, he could blossom. Who knows? But that's going to be our final final draft pick. I, I think we did okay, considering we had pick 25 in the first round and no third round pick. <laughs> so I feel like we did fine with what we were given. It turns out that Latham is a 70. BB's a 73. Mitchell and Sam are still are both 69. Nice. Xavier Worthy's actually a 71. And then Culpepper's a 67. Does he go up at all if I move him to edge? Like if I turn him into a, a right end, does he move up or down? So we change him to a right end. He actually goes down to right end. Okay, so we'll keep him at D tackle and see how he does. We'll keep him at D-Tackle and see how he does this year. He probably won't play too much, but maybe he can get some good boosts or something, morale boosts. Best play in the class is Caleb Williams, went number one overall. Okay. I think we did okay. I think we did fine in that draft. I know the overalls aren't amazing, but with some good morale, some good play, some wins, they should go up pretty significantly, pretty quickly. So if we go to the lineup and adjust it... We add in the entire offensive line. BB will start somewhere. He's going to start at center, actually, for season one. Actually, I could start Dickerson at center. That might make more sense. And then have BB start at left guard. Mm. I'll start the rookie at center. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So we got Worthy down there. We got Parker. Okay, offense is, is fine. We need an outside linebacker. Carter's now superstar development. Blake should got up to star. That's nice to see. Reddick is now his X Factor. So we're getting some good development. I could just start Shaq Leonard. I don't know why he's a middle linebacker. Why don't we just move Shaq to outside and then he can fill that spot that we need. So let's move Shaq to outside linebacker and he should fill that role pretty nicely. Now the linebacker core doesn't even look that bad. All right, we'll see how we do in year number two. I will simulate to the end of the season. Hopefully we made the playoffs a little bit more convincingly this time. Year two is done, and uh, we went 10-7 again. I'm not sure what's going on with this team. I understand the offensive line is not as good as I would like it to be, especially now with the retirement of Lane Johnson, but I feel like we should be better than we are here in year two, and we, we did the exact same thing, 10-7. and seven. It's weird, but, I mean, we won the division and made the playoffs, so I can't complain too much, and Hurts is just not producing the numbers I need him to produce. 3,200 yards, 19 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, that's it? That's it from Jalen, my franchise guy? Do I need to start Tiny Hands? Does he need to be the starter? He's got QB of the Future tag. 
I don't know, 1,400 yards and 16 touchdowns. I feel like we wouldn't be winning as many games if we didn't have Saquon Barkley. That's just kind of my, my stance right now. Devonta Smith killed it this year. He seemed to be the only guy that Jalen wanted to throw to with 1,000 yards and 9 touchdowns. Nobody else got over 600 yards. That's kind of insane. Defensively, another big tackle season for Devin White. No surprise there with 128. Reed Blankenship had 87, 81 for Sidney Brown. So both the strong safeties getting a lot of play time and a lot of tackles. Tackle for loss leader is Hassan Reddick with 15. Jordan Davis had 15 as well. Carter, 13. A couple guys had 10. Sack leader is Reddick with 4. Brown and Sweat also had 4. And then the pick leader, Pick, was Devin White with 5. So Devin White had a defensive player of the year caliber season. He's probably not going to win it because it's my team and my team never wins awards. But he had a pretty pretty decent season. Maybe he'll go up to a superstar development or something. We take on the Saints in the wild card round. We won our last wild card game last season and we win this one as well. But we take on a big, tough team in Tampa Bay who had a pretty decent season by the looks of it. 11-6. and six. We'll see what happens here. Can we move further than we did last year? We had to play the 49ers last year, and we do. We are in the NFC title game, which is where I will jump in and try to help the team. This is the team that beat us in the divisional round last year, so we'll see what happens. They're a good team, obviously. They were just in the Super Bowl, and they just won the Super Bowl in this simulation, so... Year number two, NFC title game, Eagles and Niners. Let's jump in and try to get the Eagles back to the Super Bowl. Here we are in the NFC title game against the 49ers. They take a 3-0 lead. That's okay because we can take a touchdown. There it is, 7-3. In the field of jeans, can we get the job done? 7-10. Back in the red zone, get another touchdown. There it is, 14-10. Coming up on the end of the half. 14-10, second half action. Niners score, but can we score? Yes, we can. 21-17. We are battling with the Niners. It is a close game. They score again. We score again. Very quickly, too. But they score again. The Niners are just back and forth with the boys. It's fourth and four game on the line. What is going to happen? The world doesn't know. Hopefully, I know. And I'm looking at can't guard Mike here. Michael Thomas underneath for the win. He's open by a mile. Michael Thomas down the line. Oh, it's beautiful. You, you can't guard him. I say it all the time. His his Twitter handle is that, that for a reason. You can't guard Mike, baby. A minute and four to go. 20 to 31. I know that I'm running read option with Bosa on that side. It's a dangerous thing. So I'm going to give it to Barkley. Saquon Barkley. <sighs> that was a good play. It was a really good play. Really good run from Saquon. Having Saquon on this Eagles team is kind of a cheat code in terms of the actual gameplay. Uh, I'm going to call a timeout here. We still have one left, but I just want to give my, my guys a little bit of breathing time, a little bit of chance to regroup before we run a Michael Thomas play again. <laughs> Underneath, Michael Thomas turn up the field. Mike is in! It's the unlikely hero! Michael Thomas can't guard Mike, baby! You simply can't guard him. Time is running out for Purdy and the Niners. 28 seconds, one timeout. They need a touchdown. Can we stop them? Hopefully we can. Get to Purdy. Don't let him roll out. They can't. It doesn't matter if they get in the field goal range. And they use their final timeout. They have to score a touchdown. 23 seconds, no timeouts. We kept them in bounds. Good job. The Chiefs won, so it'll be Eagles, or it'll be hopefully Eagles. It'll be Chiefs versus whoever. Forcing Pur Purdy to throw that away. Third and one, 18 seconds to go. They've obviously got two downs, so we'll see what happens here. Oh, it's a screen. No, it's not a screen. What, what was that? A, was that a screen? I mean, it, it set up like a screen because the defensive line got right to the quarterback. I don't know what happened, though, but it's the final play of the season for the Niners, potentially. What is going to happen? We've been getting pressure with Hassan Reddick. And it's going to be another screen. And it doesn't work. The 49er play calling in the playoffs is abysmal. Oh my god. I cannot believe they just did that. And the, the Philadelphia Eagles will go back to the Super Bowl to get their revenge on the Kansas City Chiefs. You couldn't write it any better. You could not write it any better. This team I did not think would make the playoffs. Considering... Actually, that's not true. I thought we'd make the playoffs 
because I thought we'd be better. But when we went 10-7, and seven, I didn't think we'd go very far in the playoffs. And now we're here in the Super Bowl to take on the Chiefs, get our revenge. And remember, this is year number two, which is in line with what I said at the beginning of the video. But it's not going to be easy. Jalen Hurts goes up to a true 95, which is nice for this game. But it is a matchup against the Chiefs, our arch rivals. What's going to happen? I hope it ends with Jalen Hurts holding Lombardi, but we'll have to play the game and find out. Here we are. It's the Super Bowl. We're not going to jump in. We're going to let the CPU handle this. But it is the Super Bowl against the Kansas City Chiefs in Jerry's world. What can we do? Are we going to blow out the Chiefs in the Super Bowl? 17 now to 7. Approaching halftime with a big lead. It is 20 to 7, but now the Chiefs are starting to come back. Patrick Mahomes, oh my god, okay. Forget about blowing the Chiefs out. Let's just win the game now. Patrick Mahomes said, I, I don't want to get blown out. It is late fourth quarter, 33 to 29. If we put this one in the end zone, we got a good shot of winning this game. It's not guaranteed, obviously. We got a good shot regardless. 33 to 29. First and 10 from the 15. Hand the ball off to Barkley. It's why you paid him. It's why you got him on the team. But he gets a yard. Not great. But that's why you got Jalen. That's why you got Jalen. To get you the big moments that you need. End zone. Devonta Smith. Touchdown, Eagles. And that could be the dagger. What a throw. What a catch. 40 to 29. We got the ball back again. And we put it in again. We're going to win the Super Bowl, ladies and gentlemen. Year number two, we are going to beat the Chiefs, get the revenge on the Chiefs for beating us a couple years ago, and win the Super Bowl with Saquon Barkley on the team. And that was a fourth down fullback run? What the heck are you doing? <laughs> what kind of call is that? And there it is. The rebuild is technically complete. We have won a Super Bowl, brought it back to Philadelphia for the first time since 2018. This time, I'm a little bit happier, obviously, and a certain uh, Mr. Quarterback that we won't ever mention again on this channel isn't on the team, which makes me even more happy. But the Philadelphia Eagles are world champions again. We will go one more season so that we can try to defend our championship, but if history has anything to say about it, I don't have a great track record of repeating as champions in one of my rebuilds, so... So it's not going to be an easy thing to do. But at least we got one. So we can say that this has been achieved. It is completed. We are world champions for the second time in team history. Oh, it feels good. It feels good to get that done. Man, that was such a crazy season. Like, we go 10-7 and seven for two straight years. The first year we get bumped out in the divisional round. The second year we go to the NFC title game, play the Niners... We beat them and then go to the Super Bowl and play the Chiefs and beat them. What a what a weird season, but I'm glad that it ends with a with a championship. And we get Saquon a ring. Jalen Hurts gets a ring, obviously. A lot of those guys weren't on that team in 2018, obviously. So uh, we get a bunch of championships, first-time champions, and a lot of good upgrades as well. Hopefully that means that we get some upgrades for uh, our offensive line. Let's go take a look at that right now. Do we get any upgrades for the offensive line? Cooper Beebe revealed to have star. Jason uh, JC Latham goes up to a 74, up to a 75 with morale boost. I don't see any changes. Xavier Worthy's actually star development. We'll move him up the board a little bit. Uh, but I don't see any development upgrades on the offense. What about defense? We've got everybody basically the same. Yeah, I don't see any new changes, but hey. A Lombardi is a Lombardi. I don't care. I don't care. Season recap. Jalen Hurts is the Super Bowl MVP. Josh Allen wins MVP of the league. Robert Sala, Coach of the Year. Brandon Ayuk and Alex Highsmith are the Players of the Year. And then Jaden Daniels for the Broncos. And Byron Murphy the second for the Titans are the Rookies of the Year. All right, dog. Whatever. Let's get to the second offseason or the final offseason, I guess, so that we can try and win another championship. I don't know who needs new contracts. Hopefully nobody too crazy, because I don't think we have that much money. We have $45 million. That's not bad, but I just hope there's not anybody that needs crazy amounts of money. Hassan Reddick is here. We will accept the option on Jordan Davis, since this is going to be the, the final season. We want to pay him. Josh Sweat needs a new contract. Reed Blankenship needs a new contract. Tiny Hands. 
You're asking for $53 million, Tiny Hands? Really? The audacity. I can't believe that. You win one Super Bowl, you hold one Super Bowl championship in your tiny little hands, and you think you can have the gall to ask for $53 million as a backup quarterback? You need to get put on a different pedestal. One a lot lower. Hassan Reddick, what's his what's holding him back here? He doesn't like the scheme fit. Well, I can change that. I can change the scheme fit. I can change that. Don't don't worry. It ain't nothing but a nothing. Team scheme. You don't like Tampa 2? Fine. We don't have to play Tampa 2. I mean, it's not even the best scheme. We can go base 4-3. That's totally cool with me. Totally cool with me, dog. Does that help you out a little bit? He doesn't like base 4-3. What do you like then? Tell me what you like. I'll give it I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you raw. What do you want? You don't like base 4-3. I can give I can go we can go 3-4 under. You want that? You want to play with the four linebackers? I mean, we can do that if that if, if that's what gets you to sign. And then I'll just switch it right back to what I want to do when you when you're signed here, but don't tell him. Does that make it better? Yes, Hassan Reddick now wants to be here, so we can re-sign him. I was worried I'd have to trade him, but we can re-sign Hassan Reddick, and he's going to come back, and now I will immediately switch it right back to what I wanted it to be. Thank you for doing the dang thing. We are not going to run a 3-4 under. We are going to run a base 4-3. So I appreciate your hard work and your dedication there, but you got bamboozled. Reed Blankenship, I want back because you're my starter and you want to be here, so 3.5 should be good enough, and he's going to come back. 16 million, we probably should get Josh Sweat back, but if we get Josh Sweat back, that's all we can do. I was never going to sign Kenny Pickett to that contract. Kenneth Gainwell, we're not going to have a backup running back for Saquon. This is going to be kind of a situation. So maybe we should save this, trade Josh Sweat. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should do that. Is there a, there shouldn't be a penalty for Josh Sweat, right? If I go to team salaries, there should not be a penalty for any of these guys. Uh, no, it doesn't look like there's a penalty for any of them. Okay, perfect. So we can trade them without having to worry about taking on any unnecessary cap, unless we trade for a draft pick. But I'm probably going to trade for a player to replace or to fill the hole of Josh Sweat. So let's just swap positions, basically, just swap players. Josh Sweat, you can, somebody can take Josh Sweat, and we can take somebody back in return. Hopefully somebody a little bit better. Yannick Ngakwe, no. Hendrickson, no. Von Miller's funny. Uh, no. That'd be cool for one season. I've never really had Von Miller in any of my rebuilds. Just because he's always so expensive and hard to get. Miles Garrett would be amazing. No, Carl Lawson. We could have had him in free agency. <laughs> Obviously, Micah Parsons, but that's not going to be impossible. Actually, is it impossible? I know it's a division rival, it's the Cowboys, but I could give you, like, literally every draft pick I possess. How do you feel about first round picks? Because it's the final season, so we can go all in. Okay, maybe not Micah Parsons. <laughs> I just wanted to see where that was at. Grady Jarrett, YGM, Tyler Lacey, Jermaine Johnson is interesting. Oh, Hutch. Hutch is cool. There's Chase Young. So he did he did pick up with the, the Packers, and he must they must have re-signed him to an extension. Christian Wilkins. Christian Wilkins for a season would be cool. And I can give them a first round pick if they want it. I'll give them a, I'll start out with a second, see where we're at. Okay, that's into the orange. I can give them a first round pick in 2027. That's very, very tasty. What about a fifth round pick in 2026? Okay, what about a fourth round pick in 2026? Ooh, that's very close. I can give a fifth round pick in 2027. Trade off for acceptance. So we bring in Christian Wilkins for a one final season. I'm not mad at that at all. I like having Christian Wilkins for one final season, one final run. Obviously, we'd have to pay him if, if we were going to go on more than one year. But getting him for one year, I'm fine with. I would like to get a backup running back, though, because we're going to lose Kenneth Gainwell. So can I get a backup running back for Gainwell? And maybe I got a lot of receivers. Maybe we should try to trade uh, Devontae Parker and a couple of these receivers for, for uh, another receiver. 
What kind of running back can I get? Can I just do like a simple swap or something? Who can I get? Oh, backup running backs. Backup running backs. Who can I get? Eckler for a season? That could be pretty funny. He's probably too expensive to be a backup. Deuce Vaughn? Deuce Vaughn's fine backup. He didn't have to be anything crazy. Trade offer accepted. Perfect. I'm fine with that. Deuce Vaughn. Backup running back doesn't have to be anything out of the out of the realm of possibilities. Now we should probably trade tiny hands to get a backup quarterback. So what can we do with this? Sam Hartman? I'd be down with that. <laughs> uh DTR Herbert Richardson Mariota Drake Mason Atlanta. We can get Mac. Oh, Mac's only got a year left. Joe Milton's got Superstar? That's insane. Kenny Pickett can go be back up to Jordan Love. I didn't know Joe Milton had Superstar development. That'd be That's a crazy uh, like franchise type of player. And then the one final move that I want to make is to possibly make a move for a big-time receiver. Although we might not need that because we have three decent ones and then we have the up-and-comers. I really would just like to get rid of Devontae Parker's body. <laughs> so let's trade Devontae Parker and probably... Who else do we trade? I don't even know. We don't really have a ton of guys that I'd like to trade, except for maybe James Bradbury. So we trade these two guys and we, and we get like... Uh, I don't even know, like a defensive lineman, like a pass rusher, or maybe a center, so that we can figure out the offensive line situation for one final year. Maybe we try to get, I don't know, John Michael Smith for a season. He's not that high of an overall. I'd like to get somebody that's at least a decent high overall. Jackson Powers Johnson's a 78 with superstar. I would love to have that. Uh, maybe we could grab Eric McCoy. Is that going to be possible? I can give some draft picks, I guess. I can give up a second next year. And then a second the year after. And then a third next year. Trade offer accepted. So we get a new center. I'll take that. Going all in grab ourselves a new center so now we go to the lineup we adjust it and now BB will move over to guard that's perfect Eric McCoy comes in to fill the center spot we've got Xavier Worthy we got Adonai Mitchell tight end is, is cool with uh, the boy Goddard and now we need another corner that is good so Keeley's gonna start now for now at at uh, number two corner, but we probably could use another corner that's decent. So let me just make sure that nobody else hears anybody that I need. Uh, no, everybody else can leave. Okay, so now it's time to go to the free agency. Well, go to the draft, really, because I, I spent all the money that we had available in the cap. We've got no cap left. Two is available. Traverius Ward. There's some good players here. What about corners? Traverse Ward, Douglas, X-Man. Nobody wants X-Man. How little do you respect yourself? Because I can give you the world. And by the world, I mean I can give you the least amount of money possible. And hopefully you accept that. Oh, don't. Don't be like that. You're an old man that doesn't have any other offers. Just come play here. You gotta... Why, why doesn't Madden take into account the chasing a ring? That should be a that should be a core value in some of these older guys. Chase the ring. Take the low money. Come get a championship here in Philadelphia. But instead, they like, nah, I don't want that. You're lowballing me. I'm giving you money to come play and do your job. You should be happy. I know you made a lot of money in your career, but what's an extra million? Who doesn't want an extra million dollars? I mean, come on. Who doesn't want an extra million dollars to come and play backup corner? What are we talking about here? 
private workouts. I did load in the 2025 draft class, so we got Luther Bird and all the boys. Okay, so we need to focus on corner. Corner is probably the one we need to go to. So I'm going to look at Travis Hunter. I'm going to look at Benjamin Morrison. And I'm going to look at Jordan Hancock. Because uh, I got my hand and my... You get it. <laughs> so we are going to go look at those guys and then go to the mock draft. What pick do we have? We probably have 32, right? Yeah, 32. Do they have any of the corners? So Hancock's going 27. Uh, Abdul Carter... Benjamin Morrison, Travis Hunter. Okay, so all the good corners are going in the top. Understandable. Just wish they weren't. I don't think I'm going to trade up. I know it's possible to trade up, especially if I go and, and buy all this stuff over here. It's possible to trade up, but I just don't know if I want to. Maybe I should just to lock down a very good corner to pair alongside Darius Slay because we don't really have that at the, at the moment so maybe I should maybe I should just trade up a little bit from 32 because how, how far was was Hancock Hancock is 27 he could be good but if I wanted to get somebody amazing I'd have to trade all the way into the, like the top 10 because Hunter's right there obviously Will Johnson is going to be amazing I don't really want to trade it in the... I could easily trade it in the top five. But I don't really want to do that, especially because we're only going one more year. If we're going to go more than that, I, I would give it more consideration, but I'm probably not going to do that. We'll probably just stick and pick it at 32 and see what happens. We will see what happens. Start drafting. Number one pick in the draft should be Luther Burden, and it is. He's a fantastic player. Can't wait to see him get in the league. Will Johnson goes three... Let's just get to our pick. We're not going to trade up. We're just going to see what falls to us. Shadur Sanders. Quinshawn Judkins. Some good players. <laughs> Cam Ward. I like Cam Ward. Uh, some very, very good players. Corner, you've got Maxwell Hairston. 6'1", man-to-man. Elite jumping is interesting. C-man, C-zone is not interesting. What about Xavier Scott? Ooh, elite on a few different things. Okay, so Xavier Scott, you're intriguing. There's Denzel Burke, but I've drafted Denzel Burke in this in this uh, draft class before, and he wasn't very good, which is disrespectful because Denzel Burke is a great player. Before I take that corner, is there anybody else that I want? Uh, Jack Sawyer, but I got Jack Sawyer last time when I did the Mac Jones rebuild, so I don't want to do that. Who's this guy down here? There's a day three guy that's around three to four. I'll keep an eye on that. Deontay Craig from Iowa. Very intriguing. Foster's around three to four. Donovan Jackson's available. Keep an eye on that. I think I'm going to go with, uh, with the boy. Ooh, Mecca, but I got a Mecca Buka last time too. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to go with that corner. I like the option of of uh, Quinshawn Judkins to back up to back up the boy, but I'm going to I'm going to take Xavier Scott. We're going to see how good he is. He's got a lead in a lot of different spots, and we're going to see how good he is. Hidden development. You know what? None of my other corners have hidden development, so or have a development trait. So Xavier Scott, welcome to the Philadelphia Eagles. Maybe you can make big plays in uh, in your first season. Pick 21 of the second round. What's available for me? It's a me, a Mario. Ooh, what about uh, Donovan Jackson? Is he still available? He's not. They really take him? Really? You're going to do me dirty like that? Jared Penning is intriguing. He's got A's in a lot of different spots. How can this guy be bad? This looks really good. It looked too good to be true with that normal development. But maybe he's a high overall than, than J.C. Latham and he'll start right away. I don't know. But that sucks that taking back-to-back -back tackles two years in a row that have normal development kind of blows, but that's the, the way things crumble sometimes. I'm taking Emeka Ebuka. I don't freaking care, dog. Give me my Emeka Ebuka. Welcome to the squad, dog. Love you. Mwah. Love you. All right. Third round, pick 32. Who's going to be available here? 
Who's going to be available here? Bear Alexander. First off, love the name. Elite jumping. B play rec, A tackling. What's his archetype? Run stopper? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Davis and Igbenosin. I like that. I could take another Buckeye player. I don't hate taking Buckeyes. You guys know that. I should probably take a backup tight end, shouldn't I? Eh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Where was that guy that was round three to four that was a day three guy? Was he an offensive lineman? No, he was a Deontay Craig. That's who it was. Deontay Craig. I could probably wait on you another round, if we're being honest. I hope, at least. I kind of want to take Davis and Igvenosin. Tyleek Williams is available. Can I just turn this into a Buckeye squad? I always do. Uh, I'm probably just going to take Igvenosin. It doesn't hurt to get another corner. And I love him, so... Welcome to the squad, Ignosin. And he's in development. Look at that. Two in development corners. I'm just the drafting god. You you might as well just print it on a shirt. Drafting god has been reincarnated. And he looks like me. So what else can we do? Oh, I need to go get that De Deontay Craig guy. There he is. He's the, he's the first guy on the board. Get Deontay Craig. I thought maybe with that... With the true talent being better than his projection, he'd have a development trait. But he does. He still looks like a great player, though. Or a good player. Getting in the fifth round. Getting in the... Uh, the Was it the fifth round? No, it was the fourth round. Getting in the fourth round is, is not that bad. I think I might just let the CPU handle the rest of this. Because I don't know if there's going to be anybody else that I want. Will Rogers from Washington. DJ Uyunglele? Is he in Florida State now? Huh. Kyle McCord, yikes. Yikes, we're in the, the depths if we're looking at Kyle McCord. But I kinda, I kinda like DJ Uyunglele. As a, as a nice little backup to to Joe, what do we get? You got Joe Milton, right? And then obviously Jalen Hurts. Let's get DJ. 90 throw power for the former Clemson top prospect that moved to, what, Oregon State after that? And now is apparently in Florida State. I didn't realize that. Maybe that's wrong. I don't. I don't remember him hearing him transfer to Florida State. But whatever, dog. You do you. Sixth round. Sixth round. What can we get? What can we get? What can we get? Oh, uh, there's some cool receivers available, but we're pretty good on receiver now, especially getting uh getting t uh, two in this draft, right? Or getting the least... No, we, we just got to make a Buka. Offensive line is good. I might just let the CPU handle the rest. Unless there's a Buckeye. <laughs> unless there's a... Oh, I see Ty Hamilton down here. I'll get Ty Hamilton. Yeah, it's a Buckeye. It's a Buckeye. Come on. You know I'm a, I'm a Buckeye homer. So we might as well get a Buckeye. And then I'll simulate the final pick. It doesn't matter. All right. And the draft. So one final season... We kind of went all in by trading for uh, one year of Christian Wilkins on the defensive line. We add in some pretty good corners. We get... Penning actually is a 73 overall, which is awesome. But I don't think that's higher than J.C. Latham. Scott's a 72. Agbuka's a 70. Craig's a 70, so I guess that's something. Then we got a couple guys in the 60s. But I think that's a pretty solid draft, considering we're not really building for the future, because we're only going one year. Harold Perkins is an 81. Nolan's an 80. Judkins actually 79. Good for him. Okay, let's load the team and see what the final team looks like for year three. To defend our crown, defend our championship, get one more, get a back-to-back, -back, create a dynasty. Technically, I've already created a dynasty with the team, the way that I've set it up with the draft. The offensive line's amazing. So, I've already te technically set up a dynasty, but... The team's looking good. Offense is spectacular. And then on defense, I mean, Devin White's going to have another fantastic year. He's going to have another 100-tackle season, I would guess. Corners are looking okay. Nothing too crazy. Defensive line looks amazing now with the addition of Christian Wilkins. Linebackers are good because they'll be held up by these two guys right here. Reed Blankenship will have a good season. CJ Gardner-Johnson will have a good season. We're going to be good. We're going to be good, I would assume, back in the playoffs for the third straight year. Hopefully, back in the Super Bowl. But we will simulate the final season, and I'll catch you guys at the end of the year.
The final season has been simulated and we improved. Finally, after going 10 and 7 two years in a row, we go to 13 and 4, not only good enough to win the NFC East, but good enough to get the number 1 seed in the NFC, get the bye and play Chicago in the divisional round of the playoffs. The Bears. So maybe Chicago should keep their game plan and keep Justin Fields. I'm just saying, not just because I'm a Buckeye homer. We all know that I am. But Justin Fields is a good player. All right, let's take a look at these stats. What do we got here? Jalen Hurts finally. Yes, Jalen. These are the types of numbers I want to see. Although I'd like to see up over 4,000 yards in the air, but that's totally fine because he had 37 touchdowns to just four picks. Picks? and a 74% completion percentage. That is a monster season. Thank you, Jalen, for actually playing like you should be playing. And then Saquon, oh my God, give me a shot of heroin. Are you serious? 1,600 yards, 19 touchdowns, 5.7 per carry? Really, Saquon? You're disgusting. That is diabolically crazy. Wow. And Jalen Hurts almost had 1,000 yards with eight touchdowns. I mean, this team really stepped up. 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns for Devonta Smith. A.J. Brown had 981 and 9. So the big boys are doing their thing. And then defensively, what did I tell you? Devin White had another 100-plus tackle season. Really good year. Darius Slay, 88. 86 for Nicobe Dean, who hasn't really been mentioned at all this episode or this video, but finally showing up. Christian Wilkins leads the team with 19 tackles for loss. No surprise there. Jalen Carter had 17. Reddick had 13, Carter had six sacks, five and a half for Wilkins, three for Reddick, two for Davis and Bryce Huff, three picks, PX, for Devin White and N'Kobe Dean, two for Slay, Ringo, Ringo had a decent year, 71 tackles, two picks, Blankenship, Gardner Johnson, and Sidney Brown, and then Shaq had one, so much improved third season for the boys, and now we play the Bears, let's see if we can get the win. In the divisional round, we do 35-19. to We take on the team that we beat last year in the NFC title game. It is the San Francisco 49ers. We will jump in again and see if we can recreate what we did last year and go back-to-back -back in the Super Bowl. All right, here we are in the NFC title game. This time, we are at our place in Lincoln Financial, trying to defeat the 49ers for the second time in two seasons. But it's not going to be as easy as it was last year. We're already down 14-0 in the second quarter. I don't like the look of things right now. We might have to jump in here and get some, get some insurance yards. So hand this ball off to our bell cow, Saquon Buckley. Get into the red zone and go with a little mesh spot action. Nope, two-minute warning. Okay, no mesh spot action right now. But maybe a little bit after the two-minute warning. Who knows? We'll see what happens. What do they give me? Uh, let's give me a drive. We'll go with the drive. I like Barkley on the route to the end zone here. If Barkley gets open, that's who I'm going with. And Barkley didn't get open, but I'm still going with him. I could have caught that on a deflection. I didn't think that was going to deflect the way that it did. But I might have had a chance to get that off the deflection. But Bosa and the boys were in the backfield very quickly. No surprise there. Second and ten. I got to get that away quick. It's caught by Devonta Smith. Good catch. Nice catch after a run after the catch. Gets us decent yardage. Four verticals from the 13 is diabolical, but I'm going to go with it anyway. Because I'm going to step up in the run with Jalen Hurts, and I'm going to get myself a play to the four. Beautifully done by Jalen. And now we're going to run. Nobody's ready. Can I snap it? Thank you. Barkley into the end zone. How did you catch me? That's not physically, humanly possible for you to catch Saquon Barkley like that. I want to recount. Barkley into the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. So Barkley scores. We get on the board. We're not going to get shut out at home against Philadelphia or against 49ers. We're Philadelphia. We tie the game, but then they come back with a touchdown, 21-14. Missed a field goal or something there. This is not looking good for the boys. Come on. We had such a good season. We got to keep it going. 28-21. Fight back. Fight for your right to party. There it is. Tie game. Oh, but they scored. You gotta be kidding me. But we can score. Yes, we can. Stop them. Stop them. No field goals. No. Oh, a field goal. 38 35. It basically has to come down to an AJ Brown touchdown. That's who I'm going with. If I get some time, 
I'm lobbing. AJ Brown controller went out like it always does every video. It's once per video, I tell you. At least. Is it coming back? Are we good? Okay, we're good. AJ Brown to the end zone. It's no good. I was hoping for maybe a pass interference call or something. And we will lose in the NFC title game to the San Francisco 49ers. It's a tough game, man. Last year was our year. We got it done. We won the Super Bowl. We rebuilt the Eagles. They're in a good spot. They got a decent little bit of cap room left. You got a lot of young guys on this team. I feel like we, we're leaving Philadelphia in a good spot. He got them a championship, which is really all that matters, to be honest. I mean, it's really all that matters. You want to win a championship with Saquon, that's why you get Saquon on the team, and that's exactly what we did. And it's Kansas City and, and the Niners again. This has been the Chiefs video. They were in it in year one against the 49ers. They lost. They were in it last year against us. They lost. Will they get it this time? Third time's a charm? Third time's a charm. Mahomes isn't going to be denied three times in a row. It's just not going to happen. Madden will literally not let that happen. Three times in a row, Patrick Mahomes gets his championship again. He's the MVP. Jalen Hurts gets MVP of the league, though. Let's go, baby. And we get coach of the year. Pacheco's offensive player of the year. Miles Garrett's defensive player of the year. Quinn Ewers for the Saints is the offensive rookie of the year. And Greg Penn the second, middle linebacker for the Saints as well, is the defensive rookie of the year. So the Saints had a good draft last year. But Jalen Hurts gets MVP of the league. That's a rare thing for my teams to get uh, MVP, especially. But let's look at this team, man. Three seasons in. I mean, this team's amazing. True 99 Jalen Hurts. Probably going to be a true 99 Saquon Barkley the next season. You got amazing depth of receiver now with Adonai Mitchell and Xavier Worthy. You've got a great offensive line with two solid tackles. Now, you could probably upgrade that if you want. And then on the defense, you probably need to get some depth at linebacker because you're, you're aging at that spot. Safety is still good. Both safeties are still good. Scott's actually a superstar development player. I am the drafting god. So you've got a new number two corner, maybe even number one in a couple of seasons. Ringo's developing. You do have to re-sign Christian Wilkins, which is a, a problem. Jordan Davis has gone up to superstar. But you've got youth at defensive tackle for forever, if you want it. Bryce Huff's okay for right now. There are a few things that, that you would have to redo. You would have to upgrade, basically, uh, if we were going to continue. But $99 million at cast space is, is a good place to start. So that is where we're going to lead the Philadelphia Eagles here. Three seasons. We won one championship. We have uh, given Saquon Barkley what he wanted. He left New, uh, New York to get himself a championship. He goes to Philadelphia because maybe he thinks that's the best spot for him to win a championship. And... We got him one. So we've rebuilt the Philadelphia Eagles with Saquon. It has been completed. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Like I said in the beginning, if you have your team suggestion for me to rebuild, maybe you thought your team had a crazy free agency with a bunch of new additions. I have a bunch of teams in mind, but if your team is not one of them, then leave them down below in the comments, and I will add them to the list, and we can get this offseason really going here until we get to the draft. And then it's going to be kicking up even further once we know where all the young quarterbacks are going. Like I'm definitely going to be rebuilding whatever team Caleb Williams gets drafted to whatever team drake may gets drafted to whatever team jalen daniels uh jaden daniels gets drafted to absolutely uh probably not jj mccarthy because obvious reasons but because <laughs> he's a meat chicken man but those three quarterbacks i'm definitely going to be rebuilding whatever team they go to hopefully one of them ends up in new england so we can just two birds one stone kind of thing but that's gonna do for the video hope you guys enjoyed it i will catch you guys in the next one peace